you know, people are giving me a hard time with, with the gritty. But to my defense, the first time it happened, there was zero people in the stands. And it was like dead silence in the entire stadium after I scored a touchdown. And I was a little juiced up because, you know, it was like, I think it was the first game of the season. Um, and uh, so I was a little juiced up, had no rhythm. It was bad deal. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. One of a kind opinions, big name guests, the teams you care about every, every, every day. It's the Ron Johnson Show, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. To the Ron Johnson show on this beautiful Friday morning, and I am super excited today. Why? We got Adam Thielen, and not just because we have Adam Thielen, the NFL schedule is out, so now I can kind of plan my fall. I know all you fans out there have been doing the same. I know you've been jumping on looking at ticket exchange, trying to figure out what games you can go to, also trying to figure out plane tickets. What games should you fly to? I'm gonna give you a hint Miami. Um, easy one, but if you think about the schedule, that was exciting. Now, of course, we're going to have to talk about the Minnesota Wild. They lost last night. Their season is over. Who is more like, we talked about this yesterday, who let us down more, the Timberwolves or the Wild? Now we can really have that discussion, so I know that's going to come up for the next week or two of who let us down more, free agents, Fiala, you look at Cam Talbot, what's next for him? But man, it's NFL schedule release day. And so Sam, as I bring my producer Sam Extra in, Sam, I saw some tweets from players, and we're going to get Adam Thielen on next, and he's going to give us his thoughts on this schedule. Um, I've heard that Adam wasn't completely happy with the schedule, uh, the way it's laid out, but we'll let him explain that one. But when you look at, like, Taylor Luan, for instance, he said, just give us the schedule. Stop waiting. Like, just tell, at least tell the players. Like, stop trying to make it a big deal. I did not realize the players didn't even know because they didn't want them to leak it because I was over there and I was blessed with the opportunity to do the schedule release for the Vikings. I saw some cool ones out there. John Randall was over there. He did some fun stuff. I saw the Lions uh, do one. I saw the Chargers go anime on theirs. Two teams so far I've seen took a shot at Urban Meyer, so it's hilarious. Like the the LA uh, LA uh, Chargers put him in a put a like a, a cat a cartoon cat in a bar with Urban Meyer's outfit on, looking sad by himself though. Um, same exact outfit from from when he had the girl when he was playing quarterback and she was a center, and then the Lions took a shot at him uh, because they went to this Urban Combat Training Facility and their guy looked at the guy with the uh, Jaguars hat on and said, "Oh, you already know about Urban Survival." And then, you know, kind of the guy had a sad face and he just pat him on the back and moved him out of the way. So everybody's having fun with the schedule. Release. Ja Randall set some cheese on fire. Uh, he was, you know, looking at a bear that had been killed and, and made out to a bearskin rug. Uh, so, you know, everybody's having fun with this. But for me, Sam, looking at the NFL schedule for me, um, I was asked to pick, you know, three games that I'm most interested in, interested, in, interested in. And I'm going to ask you yours. My three. Packers week one, of course. It's it's opening day. You got Kevin O'Connell's offense versus Matt LaFleur's offense. You got Kirk Cousins versus um, what's his name, Rodgers. And then you have Justin Jefferson. And I'm not saying they have a Devontae Adams. They have Christian Watson. And so, of course, we want to see uh, that, you know, kind of like, hey, like the Vikings traded with the Packers. Like, did that even help them at all? Like, you know, or did this Lewis Seen pick really make a ton of sense? And what is he going to look like versus Aaron Rodgers? What is the Darius Smith going to do versus Aaron Rodgers? What is this new 3-4 defense going to look like versus Aaron Rodgers? I think even for Kirk Cousins practicing now every day versus a 3-4, it's going to help him get ready to play against a 3-4 in the Packers. And also the Bears. And so I think that's what's cool about now this defense switching is normally you have to give a show look, you know, to give them that look during the week to go 3-4. Now Roger, or uh, Kirk Cousins is going to deal with it every day. That's one. Two, really excited for the Buffalo Bills. You got Stefan Diggs. You got Kirk Cousins. Are they going to handshake? You know, it's like the Belichick Brady. You know, is that going to be a handshake? Is that Are they going to be acknowledge each other? Um, Kirk definitely, I don't think, holds grudges, but Stefan does. We know that. We've seen his tweets. Uh, he's also admitted, though, that he did some things he probably shouldn't have done on his way out the door. But Justin Jefferson versus Stefan Diggs, that's going to be popcorn ready. Everybody's going to talk about it. Will Stefan Diggs score in gritty? Like, there's so much to this storyline. Uh, you look at the guys from the Bills uh, that, that are now with the, the Vikings. You look at Leslie Frazier with the Bills, who was a Viking. I mean, there's, there's, there's duality on both sides. And then 
like there's the Thanksgiving game. There's the Christmas Eve game. I'm excited about Christmas Eve. I get to buy my kids a Christmas gift this year that uh, one, me and my wife already talked about last night. We might as well do it where our family's in town uh, for Christmas. Uh, I have to work Christmas Eve, so I cannot not go. Um, and I told my wife, like, I'm not buying tickets for everybody that shows up to our house. Cause one year we had 17 people in our house. So I'm not buying 17 <laughs> tickets. I am not in the NFL anymore. I am not doing that. Uh, so people are more than willing that are coming to my house for Christmas, buy your own ticket to the game, but I'm going to take care of my immediate family and probably her parents as well. That'll be their gift from me, uh, for Christmas is the ticket to, to come see the Vikings play Christmas Eve. Um, and it's a good game. It's the giants. It's a winnable game. But I also like the Jets. Like, for some reason, Sauce Gardner versus Justin Jefferson, I think that's going to be played up a little bit. Zach Wilson, uh, you know, is this new defense. Can Robert Sala get all these defensive guys he's bought in, this defense, to turn around and be what the 49ers defense was, which is hard-nosed, hard-hitting? Uh, can he get their offense? Because we know he knows the 49ers offense. Can he get that offense to show some semblance of that? They've added Tyler Conklin, so a, a multi talented tight end that you can flex out you know i think they're going to use him a lot more you're going to see his usage go up from when he was a viking um so those are the three for me those are i mean that's four but those are like the ones i'm excited about what about you sam how about this stretch week 10 11 12 at buffalo you mentioned it stefan diggs and not only diggs but an incredible buffalo team josh allen who hurled anthony barr once upon a time then you've got the Cowboys, America's team, coming in late afternoon. That's probably going to be Romo and Nance. Mm -hmm. I know you love Tony Romo. He's your favorite <laughs> announcer of all time. Uh, that's the following week. And then four days later, you've got Thanksgiving night. Belichick, Mac Jones, Patriots coming to town, primetime game. Yeah. The high-profile nature of those three games at a critical point in the season. That's where your season really starts to turn for better or for worse about week 10 yeah. in November. That's when you decide if you're going to be a contender or a pretender, that stretch is going to potentially decide it. And, and let me just add this to Ron. How often do you get a five out of six stretch of home games in the NFL yeah. schedule? That is so rare. And the road game, I know we should, we can't make fun of this anymore, but the lions are the road game. I know they won last year. So again, you can't knock the Lions too hard, but that is such a, a pivotal stretch that you need to come out of that stretch having won f at minimum four, probably five of those six games when you get that kind of home stretch in your schedule. Yeah, and, and this is the coolest thing I've seen. This, the thing about the schedule for me, the underrated dark horse that it's going to, I'm going to tweet the heck out of it coming up soon. Uh, can't wait for these clips to come out. Las Vegas. Like, if there's ever a preseason game to go to, because I know a preseason gets overlooked a lot, uh, but for fans that have never gone to a game or don't have a chance to get to a lot of preseason is not, you know, don't, don't, be, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, this Vegas is a gift. This is a Las Vegas trip. You can go down. They're probably going to play like on a Thursday or something weird like that on a Friday, maybe even a Saturday, but it's the summertime. Get down there, make some bets. You know, get your 18-1 to 1 Vikings to win the NFC bet in at Vegas, but you can mm -hmm. hang out at the pool, you can go to the parties, go to the strip, and then the next day you can wake up, probably a, a 7 p.m. kickoff game in Las Vegas uh, playing the Raiders. I hope, it's not going to happen, but I'm hoping at some point Fox says, you know what, let's take the show on the road. Uh, you know, the, the Vikings like, hey, let's take our pregame show on the road. Let's go down to Vegas, bring the whole crew down. We're going to do it from the Bellagio uh, you know, in front of the fountains or something like I, I want that. I'm, I'm it's not going to happen. I'm going to will it as much as I can. It's not going to happen. I'm going to drop hints. Still not going to happen. But Las Vegas for the fans. I think that's a cool way to start off the season for the fans. Also, they get to see an old foe in Devondre uh, or Devante Adams, like him mm -hmm. in, in, in car. Like, what is that going to look like? So we're going to see at least one series, my guess, of that 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 tandem and and do they look better than Rodgers and Devontae Adams like everybody forgets Derek Carr can slang that thing so he's now got a weapon in Devontae Adams um another one like you talked about that stretch of five you know you go from week 10 down to week uh 15 and there's uh no no sorry 16 there's five home games in there but this is another one the first six for me I'm a little bullish on the Vikings in that first six um and this is why I think the Packers that's a 50 50 toss-up game uh, I do give the edge to the Vikings. The Eagles, I'm going to give the edge to the Eagles just because it's a late night game in Philly. But then you got Detroit, that's winnable. 
on the road, New Orleans Saints, you got Jameis Winston. I'm not too sold on him being the leader of that team for the future, but they did have some weapons. They got Michael Thomas and Chris Olave, so that is that's tough, but you're going to have a defense now that's going to get after that quarterback, and we know Winston's not comfortable. We saw what happened with the Bucs. He threw 30 interceptions, so I think that's going to be a similar threat. Go after him, make him uncomfortable. Uh, the Bears, winnable, and then at the Dolphins, winnable. They can go 5-1 and one in the first six games before the bye week. That's what's crazy. Now, the Cardinals, that's going to be tough because we talked about that. Devondre or uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins coming off uh, his suspension. Uh, but, again, that's at home. So now Kyler Murray can't hear all the checks, can't hear all the things. This is, I'm excited. Like, this is a season that I'm excited about for the simple fact of when you look at the schedule. Now, of course, this is all before these rookies get into camp. This is all before these teams get formed. These new quarterbacks have moved around. Um, so there's a lot of nuances and new, new things that have to happen. There's new 3-4 defense. We have to see what it looks like. But early on, man, five and one, if you can start fast, I think this is Darius Smith said, start fast, finish strong. If they can start fast and sustain that middle, like you said, that tough block, and then finish strong those last two games on the road, Bears and uh, uh, what's his, what you call them, the Pat Packers, hey, this is a team that can win the NFC North, no problem. And they're probably playing for the NFC Championship. But that's, that's I'm not going to go that far. It's a little early. But, hey, I'm excited about this next guest, man. Coming up next, we got Adam Thielen, Viking star wide receiver friend of mine love him love his family we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with adam too we're gonna try something new i'm gonna see if it works it's called let's get random you know i forgot what that's from i think that's like will of fortune maybe but you know i'm gonna just ask a random question from twitter i'm gonna scroll the questions that people ask adam thielen so i'm gonna throw that in there now with my guests going forward try something new just a random question it could be about spaghetti and meatballs we're gonna try that stay tuned coming up next on the ron johnson show we got adam thielen if you enjoy the Ron Johnson Show, you'll enjoy our daily show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. It's Superior Sports Talk with CARE 11 Sports Director Reggie Wilson and co-host Luke Emmon. Whether it's the Twins, Vikings, Wolves, or Wild, Reggie and Luke have it covered with all the breaking news and big opinions. Catch the show five days a week by subscribing on Locked On Sports Minnesota's YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. And coming up next on the Ron Johnson Show... We got star wide receiver Adam Thielen. Uh, he's a guy I've known for a while. I've watched him grow up from a young, you know, green behind the ears receiver to now superstar golfer. You know, he's got the slick hair now. He's got the, you know, the house in Orlando. You know, he's golfing with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Adam, man, I am super proud of you, one. Uh, I'm happy to have you on my show because uh, I've watched so many other people do shows. I've done shows with you for the Vikings, but I've never – done my own so this is the first time i'm doing my own so i'm proud of myself but i am proud of you man like you've you've come a long way uh your dance moves have gotten better so i'm gonna jump out there first man like how hard or how much time did it take you to really get the gritty down <laughs> well first of all i uh congrats on the new show uh this is awesome and uh my dance is i've always loved to dance so it's kind of a funny thing because you know people are giving me a hard time with, with the gritty but to my defense, the first time it happened, there was zero people in the stands, and it was like dead silence in the entire stadium after I scored a touchdown. And I was a little juiced up because, you know, it was like, I think it was the first game of the season. Um, and uh, so I was a little juiced up, had no rhythm. It was a bad deal. So uh, it took a little bit. I thought I had it down before that, but, you know, in the, the heat of the moment, I wasn't ready. So the pressure <laughs> got to me. Yeah, and so let's let's talk about this. You know, let's let's get the the, the elephant out the room. The NFL schedule release. Uh, I'm seeing mixed messages all over t Twitter. Some players, you know, Reggie Wayne just tweeted that the NFL hates the Colts. Um, I've heard rumblings from other Vikings players as well. I saw some rookies yesterday when I was over there. Uh, some people like it. Some people are like, uh, I don't understand why we have to play two games to end the season on the road against division rivals. Uh, where do you stand on the Vikings NFL schedule? I mean, I don't really care, to be honest. Uh, it is what it is. I will say the first game I always look for whenever the schedule comes out is like, when, when are we playing in Green Bay? And unfortunately, this year we're playing – uh, late in the year again, I don't understand why they have to do that, but uh, I get it. They want, you know, the fans to be able to sit on the couch by the fireplace and and watch us freeze our butts off. But uh, uh, it, it's good for TV. It's 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 cool. I think uh, the tradition, the atmosphere, you know, an NFC North battle, you know, hopefully the playoffs on the line uh, for both squads and 
a, a big game, you know, in the cold, I think that's like, you know, built for TV. So uh, I totally get it. I understand it. Um, and it is what it is. We got to find a way and you know, you're going to have a couple of those cold games. So uh, you prepare for it. Uh, you do whatever it takes to help your team win. And so looking at your stats, man, I mean, you're almost at 6,000 yards. When you were growing up wearing a Randy Moss jersey at Halloween, you know, young Adam out there in Detroit Lakes, did you ever fathom or ever consider that this could be a possibility, that you would be one of the top receivers in the NFL, you're going to end up in Vikings history in the Purple Ring of Honor most likely? Um, was that ever a thought in your head? No, and, and honestly, still not even a thought. You know, for me, I just I'm just playing football. Uh, the, the greatest part about this game is uh, every Sunday I'm out there, every day I'm out there at practice, it feels no different than when I was in my backyard wearing the Randy Moss jersey or Chris Carter jersey or a Dante Culpepper jersey. Like, I, it feels no different to me. It's just football. Um, and that's what's so great. That's why I love it. That's why I love coming to work every day. Um, a lot of people, you know, ask me, like, how cool is it that you're playing for your hometown team and, and all that? And yeah, that stuff is that stuff is great. But at the end of the day, when I'm out there on the football field, I'm not thinking about that. I'm just playing ball and, and enjoying being around my teammates. And uh, sometimes I forget that I'm playing on the same team that I watch, you know, my idols, uh, the guys that I looked up to play on. Well, yeah, and, and so I'm going to switch this up quickly. So Wheel of Fortune, I love it because people make the dumbest mistakes ever. So I'm going I'm to play a game called Let's Get Random. So I took some questions from fans on Twitter for Adam Thielen. Uh, one of the questions, Adam, what's your favorite TV show or movie right now? Well, we just finished Ozark, and that was uh, fantastic. Uh, really got into that one. It was good. We're always in, in, uh, we're always in uh, looking for a new one. Because uh, we kind of like that's our time together after we put the kids to bed, uh, go watch a, a binge a show together. You know, we get about 45 minutes before we have to go to sleep. So <laughs> not too much binging, but uh, always looking for a good new show. Well, I want to thank Adam Thielen for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show today. Please stay tuned. The Daily Three is up next. That's three questions, three minutes. We'll be back after this. Well, it's the time of the show that I love. It's the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes. Take it away, Sam. All right, it's going to be all wild because the Minnesota Wild season is over. They lose in six games to the Blues, and last night it was not close. A 5-1 defeat. They fell apart in the second period, down 4 nothing, and never stood a chance. So the big talking point yesterday, Cam Talbot got the start. We'd been talking about it all series. When would Talbot start? Would he start at all? Kevin Gorg thought he might yesterday. Well, he did. And he struggled. So, Ron, is it time now to second guess the decision to start Cam Talbot? Yes. Yes. At this point, you might as well go on with Flory because we saw what he can do. He bounced back from games. He had a good, bad game, then bounced back, had a good game. Had a bad game, bounced back, had a good game. So at that point, I didn't understand the purpose of that move. I get it. I get the thought process behind it. Like, hey, you know, it's game six. Let's try to mix it up. No, you've, you've had a guy that has bounced back after every single turn, you know, whether he had a bad game and then the, in a good game, then he had a bad game and then a good game. And so that's that, I think that was the question mark. Now, now, yes, they did get two back to back wins and maybe that was the, the scary thing of like, Hey, like th that we've never had that we've had a loss and then we've come back and had a win. Um, and we did not do that. So let's try something new. No. You, you don't throw a guy in there that hasn't played all series. Like, he doesn't have a feel for what the speed of this game is. He doesn't have a feel for this team. He doesn't have the energy. Yes, he's a pro, and he's supposed to step up and go in his next man up mentality. But I, I, I do think that was a bad one. Like, that was one where I kept saying, like, in, they should have bought him in in game two. Like, or, or, you know, parts of game one even. If the game is over, get him in there. Like, or if you're down three goals, get him in. Like, yes, at, at that point, you know you're losing anyway. Get them in. Get them between the pipes. Let them get sweaty. Let them get the feel for the speed. Let them get a feel for the players, where the guys are going to be, you know, how they're attacking, you know, what what is their frequency of rebounds on shots. Like, he could not get going. Like, it's, it is it is a thing of feel. Like, it's like in a basketball game. I say that to people all the time um, in any sport, like football, basketball, whatever you're playing, you, baseball, you have to get a feel for the pitcher. You know, like I've seen that right now in softball, college softball. They're bringing girls off the bench to win the game in the last minute game as a DH. And they did. I've seen it twice. Minnesota did it uh, last week against uh, a Sunday against Northwestern uh, in their softball game. They bought in a DH to try to make something happen. And then they screwed up because then the last girl up was a slap hitter and she's not going to bang it out when they needed somebody to hit it far. 
And then I just saw Penn State, Nebraska, same thing. Penn State tried to bring in a girl, you know, cold off the bench. Hey, go get a hit for us because we're down three to one and we need we need to get girls on base. That's not how you do it. You got to roll with the girls that have been in there. Keep the lineup the same at that point. When is that late in Cam Talbot? He got screwed. Yeah, you know, it, Talbot was put in a bad spot and the wild penalty kill all series just let him down. Two yeah. more power play goals last night. The, the the first one was way too easy. The guy's just sitting all by himself in the slot. Pretty disappointed with the wild defensive effort in this series. And when you look at it now, you know, in, in the rearview mirror, all four of the losses were by three goals or more. They got spanked yeah. in all those. So that uh, not, not an impressive effort by the wild. Let's keep it wild focused. Kevin Fiala does not score a goal in the series, and he is now a free agent. So does his no-show in the playoffs, Ron, affect the way you negotiate with Fiala this offseason? 100%. Yeah. Why? I mean, th this is this is a league that any professional sport is, what have you done for me lately? And so they're going to bring that up. Like, that's that they definitely have to look at that. I mean, they're not going to throw it in his face. Like, oh, my God, like, where were you at? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've seen Twitter jokes about, you know, the missing posters and have you seen this guy, blah, blah. Yeah, like. It, it, it is tough. This is a business that, you know, you have to show up every single week. I mean, think about Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs, $72 million contract was based off the Minneapolis Miracle. That was the last thing. That was the biggest moment, the, the remembering moment for them, for the fans, for Rick Spillman, for the organization is like, man, Stefan Diggs did that for us. Like that was a huge moment. Um, and so when you when you go that route, that's where they thought, like, you know what, let's let's pay this guy like he's and he is worth the money. I'm not saying he's not. He's worth the money. But that's that's how that goes. You know, flip it where there's a guy that does not play well. He doesn't get that money. Look at the quarterbacks, all these quarterbacks that start off hot and then they get in the playoffs and they absolutely don't either get there at the end or they can't. People are second guessing. Is this our quarterback? Is this the guy that's supposed to take us to the future? So, yeah, Fiala, they have to use that. Like, they're going to use it. I think, you know, he can also speak for himself. If he wants to be back with the Wild, he can explain and he can kind of talk through what he wants to do. And not him, but his agent. And, you know, let's see if there's a – but there might be a team out there that needs his services. And so that's why the Wild can also play – don't play that, that that game of chicken uh, with somebody that has leverage. Like, he he can probably go to another team. Everybody kind of saw what Capri – because Kaprizov bought the, the crowd. He bought the cameras. He bought the highlights. So other guys on the ice – got notoriety people got to know them got to see them when you're in the playoffs as well the world gets to see you um so yeah so so don't so don't be don't be uh thinking that nobody else wants them like they want playoff caliber players on their roster as well like hey if we get this guy and we make him a focal point uh he can he can he can get us to the playoffs so no i, I think it's going to be used but also say i wouldn't play that game if you want them just pay them like just just mark it up and say this happened and move on yeah, I, his regular season numbers are going to attract a lot of attention on the market, I think. And if that price gets too high, the Wild don't have a ton of money. I could see them saying, you know what? You didn't deliver for us in the postseason. We're not going to, to match that offer. Last yeah. one, Ron. Are you still going to continue watching the NHL and NBA playoffs now that the local teams are out? And if so, do you have any teams uh, or any predictions for who you think wins it all? Uh, NHL. Nah, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna watch a little bit probably here and there. Uh, no, I have no idea. I mean, I'm going off of, off what people are saying. Avalanche are one of the better teams. So, you know, or the Hurricanes. So I'm gonna go between those two, the Hurricanes or the Avalanche to win it. Um, but no, I'm not going to be glued to my TV watching other hockey. Uh, I do like the wild. I got hooked on it going to that game. So that's the only reason I watched it. Um, basketball. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a basketball guy. Like I'm a hooper. Like, I mean, literally when I, when I go to lunch break, you know, if I go work out, I'm going to hoop. Like, that's what I do. So I'm going to watch it. Um, not a ton because I got kids that have sports and my both my kids are in softball. They're both in track. So like this weekend, we have like a track meet and a volley and a softball tournament. Um, so so my time goes to my kids, you know, I, I and that's why I rarely get a chance. I have to record sports um, to talk about it the next day. But um, except for football, they know football that daddy has to be at all the football games. But other than that, no, I'm, I'm there first. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to watch. So basketball wise, I'm keeping an eye on the Suns. Mavs because that's an interesting one now if, if the Mavs mm -hmm. can win this that makes it a little bit easier for the Warriors um I think the Warriors are the way they're built with that death lineup I think they have it have it going uh Jimmy Butler in the heat why because they are done and waiting everybody else still has one or two more games uh in order to get to the heat and so that's that's what's crazy is they're rested 
Uh, they're going to be sitting back waiting for the next team to want to play them. Uh, and Jimmy Butler is pissed off. Yeah, I saw him make the comment about Tobias Harris over me. Tobias Harris over me. Like, he doesn't forget. So I know, you know, he's probably laughing and snickering at the Timberwolves being out. And like, hey, you, you guys thought I wasn't going to try to make you tough. Anthony Edwards is trying to make you tough. Patrick Beverly tried to make you tough. You guys just, just didn't like the way I did it. And I think that's that. And, and of course, the coach probably wasn't the right fit. But, you know, Jimmy Butler was a right fit. I just think the way it was done, it wasn't the best uh, at that time. Uh, and maybe Wiggins and, and Levine. I think Wiggins was the one. Levine, I think Levine and Carlin D. Towns and Jimmy Butler could have got it done. I think that's the should have been the way that they went um, and moved on from Wiggins. But hey, because Wiggins needs like Wiggins needs Anthony Edwards. Like he needs a shooting star. He needs somebody to take pressure and space away from him so that he has complete space to operate. And that's why he's doing well with the with the uh, Warriors. And so, yeah, I'm gonna keep watching it because there's some good matchups still out there. And like I said, the way Luca has come back and wheeled his way to win and, you know, he makes the game play at his own pace, it's amazing. So, no, and, and winning that, yeah, I'd say I, right now I'm going to go with Heat Warriors. I think that might be the finals. I'm cheering for the Suns to win game seven because I think Suns Warriors would be an unbelievable Western Conference Finals. Yeah, the would. Suns are sort of that that rising team with Booker and Aiton. The Warriors obviously are the dynasty. Um, but then I'm also cheering for the the winner of the Bucks and Celtics to to get past the Heat because I just like those teams. I think the Celtics are really fun, and the Bucks are the defending champs. I would love to see them back in the finals as well. Yeah. Well, that'll do it for the daily three. Thank you for joining us today on the Ron Johnson Show. Please make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Minnesota on YouTube. And you can also download and take us wherever you get your podcasts.